Biden is gaslighting Americans about his failed presidency. But people know, people know how bad the economy is. They know how bad everything is from crime on down, everything that's going on. He can say whatever he want to say, but the people can feel it. They feel it in their wallets. They see it in their neighborhoods. Um, but before we get started, go ahead and hit that like button. Share this out so we can get this information out there. Subscribe if you're not already. Subscribe and hit that alarm bell so you know when I'm putting out new stuff. Now, when you hit that alarm bell, you can change it from um, from personal to all. That way you get all the notifications for when I'm putting out stuff. Also, check out my link tree in the description. It has a link to my Patreon where I talk about things I can't talk about here. And there's also a link uh, to my Instagram where I put out even more news. All right, let's talk about this news. The Biden administration will be known to history for many things, an open border and its deadly consequences, the abandonment of Afghanistan, weakness that led to uh, to catastrophe in Europe, skyrocketing inflation, and the use of federal law enforcement to target political opponents. The catalog of infamy goes on. Above all, though, this administration may be remembered for its duplicity it's continual shameless gaslighting of the American people. Biden, his team, and the psycho, um, the um, sycophantic media supporters repeatedly tell us that all is well uh, where it uh, manifestly is not. No matter how bad things become in the nation, no matter how many people suffer, reality has no purchase on the ideological bubble of this White House. This is why in these midterm elections, the American people must deliver to Joe Biden an unequivocal message that they refuse to be gaslit and they are not buying what he is selling. Biden and his staff spin not um, not simply to be optimistic. They do so to cover up the often deadly consequences of their policy decisions. I mean, look at everything. This is certainly the case as uh, regards uh, by regards to Biden open border, the president reversal of Trump era borders enforcement and his effective encouragement of illegal border crossings has led to widespread human suffering. Migrants have been dying in record numbers and they make their journeys often under the control of coyotes and human smugglers. Americans are dying, too, as uh, toxic fentanyl pour into the nations. I mean, I remember that was one of the first things that um that uh that Biden did when he got into office to he rescinded a bunch of the executive orders especially when it came to things like the environment and um and and the border where now they just know they can just walk right in and and, and get all all these uh bit is I mean why wouldn't you just come across the border if you get if they incentivize this stuff you stuff you get all these things from government government handouts just by coming across this border why wouldn't you do it and they know that Biden is not going to do anything about it uh, former White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki insisted that the Biden border disaster was not a crisis, but rather a challenge. Vice President Kamala Harris has gone further, stating that the border, border is secure. And we all know that's not true. As Biden Afghanistan's withdrawal policy went into effect and as the Taliban uh, reconquered that country, the American people were treated as a veritable buffet of gaslit falsehood. The president assured us, despite the evidence that the Taliban victory was highly unlikely, uh, Saki confidently declared that Afghanistan forces have, quote, quote, have what they need. Spin of this sort did not stop the Taliban to prevent the deaths of 13 American service members or to save the lives of Afghan civilians. And still, when that all that happened, no one got in trouble for this. No one was fired. There was no commission and no investigations, really. And we left behind millions upon millions of dollars worth of weapons that the Taliban took up. I mean, it, the, the whole thing was a fiasco. It did nothing e either to discourage the, ag um, the aggression of Vladimir Putin. America under Biden was weak. Putin reason, and thus the time was right for Russia to invade Ukraine. And everyone know none of that would have happened under Trump presidency. Given Biden's record, midterm voters must resist the election time duplicity of Demo Democratic candidates, Democrats who claim to be independent of the National Party or uh, who hedge their support for Biden should be challenged. For example, Arizona Senator Mark Kelly claims to have been critical of Biden's border policy, but as his opponent, Blake Masters, noted, Kelly, in fact, quote, 
voted for more IRS agents, not more Border Patrol agents when given the chance. I mean, they just flat out lied. Then there is New York Governor Kathy Hochul's recent crime-focused campaign ad. Hochul, the ad proclaims, wants, quote, a safer New York. But in her recent debate with Republican Lee Zeldin, a candidate committed to ending New York's cashless bail and other soft-on-crime Democratic policies, Hochul slipped and shared her real thoughts, wondering aloud why the issue was, quote, so important to her opponent. I mean, why? Because it's important to the people. I mean... I, I keep that's why I keep saying these people live in a bubble. They live in a different world than normal Americans. That's why they don't think it's a big deal. In Pennsylvania, where debate continues over Democrat John Fetterman's health and fitness for office, one thing remains certain. Fetterman will double deal on the issues most important to voters about um, um after all, he was against fracking before he was for it. And he was, quote, for it now only because there is an election on the line. As for suggestions that his opponent, Dr. Uh, Dr. Mehmet, Mehmet Oz, himself flip-flopped on fracking, Oz strongly denies the charge. I, I really don't know, really, to be honest with you. But more importantly, voters recognize the difference between a novice politician moving towards his party consensus on a key issue and a career politician conveniently shifting away from his own party stance. It is not difficult to guess how each man will vote uh, uh, should he reach the Senate. Again, I'm not really too sold on Oz, but he has to be a, a, at least a little bit better than Fetterman. Any Democrat claiming divergent from the national platform on the border, crime, fracking, or any other issues in that, that woke culture and all that stuff, is allowed to do so only for electoral advantage and usually only during election season. I mean, they just lie. When the crucial moments arrive, when the votes are most needed for the Biden agenda, they will finally be there. They vote for it every time. I mean, look at Manchin. Uh, for evidence, look no further than the most independent Democrat in Washington, West Virginia, Senator Joe Manchin, like I just, I just said. After opposing Biden's Build Back Better bill, a mansion nonetheless caved to the president's extravagant spending with his vote for the Inflation Reduction Act, a law that would reduce nothing other than the solvency of the nation. And I talked about that on a previous video um, as well. In 2022, the notion of voting for the person, not the party, is a luxury voters can no longer afford. A vote to send a Democrat to Congress or to send a Democrat to a governor's mansion, or for that matter, to the state houses and state courts is almost surely a vote for the president and his agenda. For America to begin changing course, midterm voters must see beyond the spin, listen beyond the gaslighting, and reject this president along with the candidates who support him. So, Because a lot of these people, the Democrats, they are uh, uh, um, trying to distance, us, di distance themselves from um from um, Biden because of election season, but we know who they really do vote for. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments down below. Like, share, and subscribe, and check out democrepublics.com for the latest in news. Until next time, peace. Oh,